Hi, welcome to One for the Road, where we navigate sobriety, recovery, and life in general. Tune in as we share our experience and opinions while answering any questions you may have. My name's Marissa, and this is my co-host, Judy. Hello. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, hit the notification button, all that stuff. We have a um, three-part relationship series coming up, I think, next week. Next week. So we're aiming for. So, um, and we just had a really good interview with Heather about recovery homes. So that's exciting too. And yeah, so Judy, today, just getting straight to it because otherwise we have a lot of announcements. <laughs> Wanted to talk about um, being open-minded. Huh. In recovery. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so open minded in recovery or open minded in life? Just in general, I suppose, <laughs> right? That's how that one goes. For sure. So what do you think? So take it away. Yeah. yeah. Well, I yeah. I'm uh I, I think I'm super comfortable in this chair and I might be changing my recording location. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing I think is that yeah, when I I was prior to getting sober and in recovery, I was not the most open-minded, right? I really saw things in black and white. There was no gray area for me. Um, I had opinions. I shared those opinions, um, sometimes loudly. And there, you know, and if you had a differing opinion, well, I had no use for you, you know, um, that's how it looked for me, but, you know, getting sober, and doing that stuff and knowing that, you know, we, and we've talked about that stuff. Like I, I became slowly open-minded, right. When I saw the people being happy, having a light heart, not being in emotional distress, you know, and wanting that sort of thing, I wanted to know how you were doing that because what I was doing wasn't working. Right. Yeah. And so I, in turn then slowly. And it wasn't like a decision, like, you know, Oh, today I'm going to be open-minded. It was like, I feel this badness, you know? And so mm-hmm. what did you do? And then I would listen to what you did and people would make suggestions. And that's what open-mindedness started to look like for me slowly, but surely just doing that one thing that you were doing because you suggested it. And I felt better Then I was willing to do the next thing and the next yeah. thing. You know, and so, you know, the long and short of it is that, you know, by doing that over and over and over for these last, you know, almost four years, I find that I, it's not just in recovery now. Now it's when I can watch the news, right? Or, you know, know, we were talking off camera, you know, about like loading a dishwasher. For sure. I believe that there's a way to load the dishwasher. I, you know, it's the only way those things are going to get clean. That's not really a fact. You know, it's not a fact. And so, you know, by letting somebody else have an opinion, you know, allowing them to whatever. And, and, and I find that by taking these things that, you know, by being that open-minded, right. And taking suggestions and doing those things, I find that some of the stuff you're doing, you know, makes my life easier. So why wouldn't I want to do that? You know? So um, what do you got? Yeah, no, same, like same girl, same, but, um, you know, I think my open-mindedness came from a position of desperation, which is like usually the, the turning point for me and my like willingness to do anything different than what I think should be done. And I know that, um, yeah, like I was so desperate when I first got sober Well, even when I was like, when I wanted to get sober, right. Going to treatment was being open-minded that like these people could probably help me where I, where I couldn't help me. Right. Because I had this big ego and, um, I thought that I should know everything and, and I didn't know how to stop drinking. So I was open-minded enough to like go to treatment and say like, okay, yeah, this will work, you know? And it grew, like we talk about the door being open a little and it gets, you know, becomes a little bit more open and, And that's exactly how it worked for me too, you know, went into treatment and said that I needed help. I couldn't get sober on my own. Mm -hmm. And I listened to what they said. And if they told me to jump on one foot and pat my head and that, that would help keep me sober, then I would do that, you know, and that just, that built on itself. Right. And it became a thing of trying to stay sober that way. And then it became, well, if that worked in this area 
in what other areas can it work in? And I am not always the most open-minded person. Sometimes I just want to do things my way. I don't want to listen to what you have to say. I don't want to do it a different way. I'm comfortable with this way. This is the way I'm doing it, you know, but if I'm experiencing some discomfort, if I'm experiencing some pain, then that's usually the moment that I'm like, well, maybe there's a different way. Like if I'm noticing a lot of resistance in life, I can say like, well, how are you doing it? You know? And, um, I had to get a lot of the ego out of the way in order to be in a position to say, can I be open-minded in this situation? Right. Because it wasn't just a whole thing. It was circumstance by circumstance, right? Am I willing to be open-minded in this situation? Am I willing to see that there's a different way to load the dishwasher? Right. Like, am I willing to see that, you know, am I open-minded enough to say like, oh, you know, and what I found about being open-minded is that some people do it better than I do. Yeah. Well, Don't I like that, but yeah. some people do it better than I do. Yeah. And yeah. some people do it easier than I do. And I've been doing it the hard, which that's about the theme of my life, right? I, I do things my way, which is the hard way. And I always pay a high price for it. Like, <laughs> Well, for sure. And that's what stuck out when you were talking, like when I'm feeling resistance, like that's the part that I'm relating to. Right. Because even now, like thinking that I'm this wonderful, open-minded person, here's the thing. Most of that open-mindedness, open-mindedness looks like I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you how it's going to be done. And I'm going to get that resistance and feel that resistance. Right. And it's going to be very, very hard. Then there's some pain. Then there's the emotional distress. And, you know, and then somebody says, well, why don't you try it this way? You know, I have to, it's almost like I got to be beat down a little bit in order Absolutely. to shift, yeah. you know, and, and that is, you, you, I think you nailed it on the head. It's really just that ego that like, I know this thing, you know, even in conversations, I find like with kids or, you know, whatever, back to relationship series, right? Like, here's the thing, you know, when I know something, right. And when, even when I know it's right and, you know, it's probably going to be easy if I feel resistance from somebody else when I'm putting my nose in where, you know, like trying to direct the show and, and, and that's the kind of thing, right? Like my willingness needs to be and my open-mindedness needs to be in a place of what's good for me, not what's good for you, you know, and looking at your life compared to mine. And if yours is looking a lot better, why in the world don't I want to try what you're doing? Right. right. Yeah. And what do I have to lose? Right. right. Like I, I it's already hard. find myself. Yeah. I, I often find myself like, what do I have to lose? Because I'm like, well, if I try it your way and it's worse or wrong, or it's, you know, whatever, then I get the joy. I get the joy of being like, told you so, you know, (laughs) called it, told you so, um, or, or my life just works out a little bit easier, you know, and I, I have to be open-minded to everything because I miss out if I'm not. Right. There's a lot of wonderful things out there that I can judge straight out the gate and I can miss out on a lot of opportunities by being closed minded. I can miss out on some of the great joys by just, thinking you know, whether I, one way. that's it. Yeah. By thinking there's the one way, or, you know, we talk a lot about fear. Like the fear is what usually keeps me in that box where, you know, I only know what I know and I'm, and I'm comfortable there, yeah, you know, and I'm comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, and God knows I don't want to be uncomfortable. You know, yeah. I also don't want to say you're right. There's that ego again, you know, uh-huh. like your way was better. I don't yeah. want your way to be better. I want you to tell me that I win. Right. Like I want, I get well, the right. cookie for, you know, well, Jude, you were right. You know, God, I yeah. love that. You know, yeah. I will tell you, it doesn't happen very often. So it's like, you know, it doesn't happen often over here either. I'm telling you, you know, <laughs> yeah. but it's just important. And I think, especially like when you are someone who is in recovery, um, you know, I believe what I believe about the disease of alcoholism that it's centered in my mind. Um, I miss out. I miss out if I say things like, well, you know, this is the only way for sure. This is the only way, right? 12 step meetings are the only way, or, you know, maintenance medicine is the only way. And, you know, I miss out on a lot of different things, right? Like I just have to, um, continue to be open-minded to all paths of life, you know, to everything. 
And I think that it also, you know, just, you know, not for nothing. I think that it's also, you know, I could try something once and being open-minded enough to try it again, mm-hmm. you know, because here's the thing, you know, I tried recovery and it didn't work. Right. It didn't right. work. I relapsed. So, you know, the good news is, is that I was open-minded to say, well, I'll try this other thing, you know? Right. And so I think that that's sort of where it's at is that it's, you know, it doesn't always have to be a one and done. It's not an all or nothing proposition. It's really, um, you know, in, in just in recovery sense, you know, just in that, not just in life, but I think that it's true. You know, I, you know, I, I don't know. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> that's okay. I, um, I think, I think we covered a lot of bases. <laughs> covered a lot of things. I this think short be open-minded. And, you know, we mentioned a lot about, like, we kept saying willingness. And so I'm sure we're going to end up doing a series on yeah, that. It kind of goes together, doesn't it? But speaking of being open-minded, um, you know, we are, and I'm going to close with this. We oh, yeah. have been approached by hashtag JFT guy. He, um, reads out of a book called just for today. And he has asked us to be, he's in the recovery community. He's asked us to be on his channel. So we so go follow him, go subscribe to him. He's great. He, um, he's a great representation of recovery. He's been coming around since 2013, which is pretty amazing. Um, so we're going to be on his channel. We'll, we're going to more than likely have him on our channel. Um, we're going to continue to reach out to people and spread the love. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, follow Notif- us on Twitter, the notification button, Yeah, hit the notification button. So, you know, when we're coming out with new episodes, we're going to, um, we interviewed someone yesterday. So we're going to, we're going to keep doing that. That was really fun. We had a great time with Heather, got yep. a lot of questions answered about, Lots um, information. Sober living. so yeah, that's, that's what we got for you. And, uh, keep coming back. Keep coming back. That's all for today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Be sure to hit the notification button so you know when new posts are coming up. Keep coming back.